it's Riley with Literary Cucina. I want to talk a little bit about Lenten cuisine during the 13th, 14th, and 15th centuries. Lenten fasting rules were such that you couldn't even have any animal fats or animal products in the things you were cooking. Not just you can't eat meat on Fridays like most modern Catholics practice. So to adhere to those rules and because of the length of the fasting, it's 40 days for Lent but also medieval Christians fasted really frequently so like there were big chunks of the year that you could have any animal meats or fats and you could have any animal products and things you were eating. So there's this wealth of Lenten recipes that you can find if you know the places to look. In Italy, in the 13th century, an anonymous Neapolitan gives us the first collection of recipes and he begins with vegetables and Lenten foods. Around 1400, an anonymous Tuscan follows suit, gives us a similar collection, and then in 1430, an anonymous Venetian does the same. There's slight mod modifications between and among those three texts, but really they're all a lot like that first Neapolitan one. In the anonymous Venetian's cookbook from 1430, there's a recipe for apple fritters, for example, and they're specifically designated for Lent. You're supposed to cut them so that they look like the host, but then you don't put in the kinds of ingredients that you would associate with a fritter, like there's no eggs, you can't have eggs in that, it's for Lent. So it's just saffron, sugar, flour, currant, apple, and oil. Obviously, not only do we know that cookbooks were kind of like the province of the upper classes because you had to be literate to understand what was in them, but also we can tell from the ingredients in that that it would have been served at a more aristocratic table. Saffron, sugar, cinnamon, oil, all of those are, were expensive then as they are now. I think it's really easy as a kind of modern person with maybe some dietary restrictions or different dietary choices to look back in the historical record and feel excluded because everything seems meat-centric. We have this received understanding of the way people ate in history as being really, you know, meat-focused, but in reality, the way that Christianity worked, at least in the context of Europe, meant that the opposite is true. Sure, there is a lot of history and a lot of recipes that prioritize meat, but there are also a lot that had to figure out, you know, ways to eat delicious things during religious fasting seasons where you couldn't cook with ingredients you were used to. So it's really exciting to look back and if you want to, find foods that allow you to eat like you want to in the modern moment, but have a really deep history.